but that's that's my business. Cool. That's great. Yeah. Are you talking about his axle up on the board? I'll get a picture of that here. What's that? Okay. I mean, this is the axle with his logo on it. From San Diego. From San Diego. Big three swapping. Porters and door skins and so forth. But it will be, be a yeah, like a cab and a half pickup. I think I'm going to make one solid. Okay. So, but I bought it disassembled because I'm going to stretch it about 10 inches so it's more proportional to the body. So, I've got my work cut off. This is not cut down yet. That's got to come down two inches. But hopefully I'll have a little time now to get back after it. You're ready for spring, right? Uh, which spring? <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's right. Proper answer. So let's just wander through the other area. I'll show you some of the stuff. Some of the projects that RG's got going. Got a frame here. Got a bunch of stock. Right here we got some stock. Sitting around here. Got a frame hanging on the wall. Got a hoist. Got a pickup built from a double A body. More stock and stuff here. Over here he's working on a Jeep tug from an airport. With a cowl. Dash panel. Here's a fender and hood part of this tug to use at the airport to tow the planes around. Utility vehicle. What is Just that? Uh, Minneapolis Marine or something. Tractor. Yes, uh, tractor engine, yeah. The whole power train is on a tractor. Six cells for the full mode. The Minneapolis Marine yeah. Army style that uh, RJ is working on. It's an uh, air over, so it's pneumatic, hydraulic, rear lift for the back. Apparently, they use these a lot for moving the, the howitzers, the 105s around, marshalling. Them. Magnets. Magnets built in it. You can put it behind a patch, put your patch in there, it holds everything in, and then you can do it quickly. Where do you buy that copper stuff? Probably from any, anybody who would sell them right away. Scrapyard. <laughs> Tony, where are you? I'm right underneath your armpit. Okay. Mm -hmm. oh. So the green is just like solder, huh? You see green, you go. Yep. Or can you and see you, that through your shield? Well, I see green, but you don't want to get it too red. You want to keep it at the lowest temperature you can. I don't really know. They're using the attention. shield of aluminum rod. Damn. So with flux coated, you'll have a little flux on top of it. But in fact, I've got it so so it ties together. I can walk down through here and not use a filler rod. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hold that, sir. And then if you're going to hammer weld, you want to be set up where you can just get back on it real quick. Much faster than I'm doing here. And what you're doing is just typically aren't able to hammer on the back side. You've got to down on the back side. So, you can see I didn't leave a gap. I'll do another one and I'll leave more of a gap so you can see. If you if you don't leave a gap, it's going to be tight and you can just walk down through there without a filler wrap. Yeah, run. you 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 had a gap to start with, but when you started welding, it, it sucked it together. Yep. yep. You can see the two pieces are 
working away from each other. Normally you'd have this clamped and in a position where it can't move. Clamped, you're going to get a much cleaner weld than trying to weld two pieces that are chasing away from each other. For the other side. All right. All right, give her a flip over now. This is what we call a butt weld and a hammer weld. Yeah. Realm of who's all here. <laughs> yeah, see. This is going to go on YouTube. Jack will have this by the end of the day. Are you going to send it to Hillary? Tom, way back there. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> you guys have to drive down the road about another. He's got a full crew. You can see the guy signing out there. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hillary's <laughs> prison. Yeah. Butt welding with a gap. Now. Yep. A gap about the size of your rod. Again, it's not clamped in position. If you were doing this, you want a nice, you would, you would clamp it in place so it doesn't walk around. So to your point, tack it and tack it. So you're just melting the rod on it first and then you're heating yep. up the metal? No, you want the, you want the, parent metal and the filler metal both at the same temperature. So okay. you, you've got to get it your... It like you were heating the rod up more than the metal. My bad. Just getting it down there close to the flame so you're ready, so it's molten, ready to go. And what's the composition of that rod? Metal. Well, steel. <laughs> With a copper core on it? Copper coating. <laughs> it looks like copper yeah, coating. Rusty. Again, you don't want to go more than an inch, and depending on your situation. Even less than that if you've got an area that's subject to warping. So oftentimes, half an inch, camera welded. Skip ahead. So if you're doing a longer panel, start here, weld half an inch, hammer it out. Move ahead, weld that. Move ahead, weld that, and then come back. So you're not building up heat in the panel. So you're building up copper. No, just well, copper. Copper. Mild, mild, mild steel. Mild steel. Well, mild I've steel. seen people weld with coat hangers. Yep, I did that for years and years. There's yep. nothing wrong with it. Mm -hmm. Yep, it's just mild steel. Oh. I could continue to hammer that down, but then your metal around it's going to come just up gonna the other way. You're just going to make another dish on yep. the other yep. side. So there's. I haven't used one yet, but I've had some friends swear by a disc that you can put on your grinder, a shrinking oh, disc. Shrinking. Really? Well, yeah. I've used one by the yeah. yeah. Heat shrinking on metal. Yep. So about a dime's worth, and then get on it. So in very short order, you can put a lot of shape into metal. Definitely recommend the foot, mm -hmm. foot shrinker, but you can get these Eastwood or any of the other companies. <laughs> See? <laughs> Don't give me any ideas. <laughs> Your physical fitness program. Exactly. Yeah, well, Which I've been doing better since I retired. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
shrinks the same as this are half of what it costs to buy them from the other place that they got a motor. Really? So you can see you can really pull some metal together. So pass that around and yeah, I I've got the I've got the steps in where yeah. You You've got the steps now. Yeah. Yeah. The keys is, don't get your fingers between the wheels. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. I haven't done that. Though. First lesson. Yeah, I don't want to do that either. But you, uh, it takes a while to. And it's counterintuitive when you're working this through, trying to keep a nice tight pattern. Kind of like back in the trailer. Would you be able to get those ripples out of that? With that there? wheel? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh, okay. Yeah, let's move it out. Well, because I stopped. Oh, but okay. You back off the wheel a little bit, run it through, and, and then know. tighten the wheel down again. Okay. I took okay. a seminar. See where it's smoothing out here. 20 years ago in and Massachusetts. Here. Uh, English wheel. Faye Butler. <laughs> There's the crack. Right there. Okay, that's the before. I'm going to open it up so you place the wire in there. Hmm. Once you get it open, usually there's a little more metal so you can walk along like a can opener and raise it up with a... So you can see the, the rod itself has failed. Yeah. So what I would do is open this up. I'd cut out a section and I'd say minimally, probably a couple of inches on either side. Weld the new rod in there. Again, okay. hammering it, peening it to huh. make the rod strong. And you've got to be able to get the rod back down to the right diameter. Close that back up. Yeah, we really appreciated it. Very well done, Tech Center. We enjoyed the you know use of your garage and uh, you know all your expertise. Thank you again. Okay, we're just completing our tech talk at RJ's. Uh, here's one of his products here. Beautiful Roadster. Introduced to quite a few tech talk items. Had a great time. We just sort of scan some of the stuff he's got around here. Lots of projects <laughs> here. Heavy duty frame here. Some more heavy duty stuff back here. Model A two door. Got a nice deer too. Yes. Half a dozen frames set in here. Sandblasting cabinet and some tin. Okay, there's the sign. Wonder if this is where the seminar. Ah, looks like 
this is where it would have been. This is the front entrance here. There's the barn. See, he's got a couple cars sitting down there. And we're on our way. Thanks again, RJ, for a wonderful seminar.